Are you thinking about starting a trucking company? In this video, I'm gonna go over the top five things that I wish I knew before starting my trucking company and what I would have done to mitigate the issues. Welcome, welcome back to Mystery Money. My name's Nick, and if you're new here and looking for money tips and tricks, ways to make your business run more efficiently, or you're just looking for more information about starting or growing a business, start now by hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications so you don't miss anything. When we formed our LLC over five years ago, there were many things that I wish I would have known. So I thought I would go over the top five that I feel may benefit you as you prepare to start your trucking business. So number five, this business is expensive. When we started out, my brother had been a company driver, so there weren't as many costs that he would see directly. If he needed a tire, repairs, or anything else, he would just get a comm data check and call it a day. All of those costs now are directly paid by you, or in this case, me. And when your truck is broken down, you can't just borrow another one from the fleet. And essentially, if that happens, your revenue stops. You're going to be spending money and losing money on a non-functioning truck. So how I would have mitigated this issue, I would have looked and got a larger line of credit. And if you're unsure the difference between using a line of credit or a credit card, check out this video here. With lines of credit, you wanna look at about 10 to 15% of what your gross revenues are. And these lines of credit are only to be used for short-term expenses like fuel, wages, insurance bills, things that are going to be paid off within, let's say, the next year. Having an adequate line of credit also helps you to not go into credit card debt when something inevitably breaks. That leads me into my next tip, things break. And things break often. And often, it's when you really don't want them to happen. Driving a large truck or a large piece of equipment is a whole lot different than driving your everyday driver. Checking your oil in a passenger vehicle almost never has to be done. But on large pieces of equipment, it seems like something is always leaking. Make sure that the drivers you're hiring are looking for small things so that the little things don't turn into major issues. Always have your trucks looked at for warning lights, even if you think it may be nothing. There's multiple systems that all talk to a computer brain and even a small issue can cause major problems. I once had a Dodge Ram pickup truck shut off at an intersection and the only reason was because I had a leaky fuel cap. So how you can mitigate these issues. If you want to know my thoughts on new versus old trucks, check out this video here. But in short, I would have only bought a new truck or one with lower miles to begin with. We did have an extended warranty on the engine, but guess what never had any issues? Yep, the engine. Or if we did have an issue, it wasn't covered under warranty. But the rest of the truck was showing signs of wear. Now, I'm a firm believer in new trucks, even with all the emissions issues. I feel like you still make out in the long run. But making sure that you take care of your drivers will kind of ensure that they take care of your equipment. So, by taking care of your drivers leads me into number three. Drivers and the cost of hiring. When we started out, we only had one driver who was my brother. Once we started growing and we hired our second driver, we needed to get workers' comp insurance. We also needed to keep employee files, file additional additional taxes, order several credit cards, and all the things that go along with employees. Before you hire a driver that's a non-family member or not related to you in general, make sure you look at what the worker's comp insurance is going to cost you. I know there's different forms out there and other channels that talk about that you can 1099 a driver, but at the end of the day, the IRS is really cracking down on trucking companies that are paying this way. If you look at the definition listed under the IRS classification, if you control every aspect of your driver's day, including what they drive, where they deliver, what they deliver, when they pick up, all of those things, then they are considered to be an employee instead of a contractor. Now, if your drivers take your truck and you don't care when they tow loads or when they show up, then technically you could probably consider them a contractor, but again, I'm not an accountant or attorney, so consult them first. But after speaking with many accountants, they have all told me that the cost you will incur if the IRS ever audits you or finds out that you're paying a 1099 contractor versus an actual employee is going to negate any of the money that you would have not spent on workers' compensation. Insurance. Workers' comp insurance is the number one cost when it comes to employment outside of wages. When they calculate your workers' comp insurance, they are going to go off the gross revenues that you pay your workers, not the net pay that they actually receive. When we started out, I didn't even think about workers' comp insurance because my brother didn't need it. And as an owner operator of the company and a family member, he was able to get occupational hazard insurance through the carrier we were leased to. And that is going to lead me to number two. When we started out, we were leased onto a carrier called Super Service that is no longer in business. When working with the recruiter or whoever it was that was contacting us, um, they would send me bits of information. It wasn't really laid out specifically on what costs would be taking out. It was just basically a estimate of what we could make. Now, being the naive new fleet owner, I just took their word at face value and really didn't look at the underlying costs that we would have incurred. Make sure when you're looking at these contracts from carriers that you're asking the questions of what exactly expenses are coming out of your 
your check and what your net bring home pay is anticipated to be. If they give you a large range, ask them to be more specific on the average driver they pay. You don't want them quoting higher team drivers or someone that lives in their truck. You want somewhere in between so you can use those numbers in your projections. There's a lot of companies out there that will bring in their gross numbers and they'll tell you how many hundreds of thousands of dollars they're making per truck, but I don't really care about that. I care about what is going to go into my company's pocket and available for me to pay bills. I would have also done a little more research with the carriers that we were looking at, before I ever applied for my first loan for my truck. I would want to verify in writing what all those exact costs are and what they're going to be my responsibility or the carrier's responsibility and ultimately what the net pay is going to be in order to pay that loan. Once you have all the information, it's a whole lot easier to plan your business plan and about what your estimated revenues are going to be so that you know what you can pay your drivers. And now for the number one thing that I wish I would have known prior to starting a company. Before I get into number one, if you could do me a favor, if you're getting any value, smash that like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Now the number one reason, and I don't know how else I can say this, but the beginning is going to suck. I don't want to sugarcoat anything because that's not the type of person I am, and I believe in giving you the honest opinions and the experience that I've had. The whole reason I started this channel is to be as transparent as possible in helping you with your business. So telling you lies is not gonna really do anything for you. I'm not gonna sit here and say starting a trucking company is going to be easy, and that you're gonna sleep like a baby at night knowing that all the money is rolling in. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be sleepless nights. There's going to be fights with your significant other, your brother, your sister, your cousin, whoever you're involved in in the business. I'm not going to say that it gets 100% better, but I can say after a period of time, you're going to settle into more of a routine and understanding the ebbs and flows of your business. If you would have told me in the last year that fuel prices were going to go from $3 a gallon to almost $7 a gallon, and that the cost of parts, materials, and everything else is going to double or even triple, I would have said you were crazy. But that's exactly what we're seeing over the past few months. I don't even know where we're going to see an end in sight. I can say that a lot of the rates have gone up to compensate for some of those fuel prices, but there's definitely a lag. But it's gonna take you a little bit longer to recoup some of your initial investment given these higher costs. With all that being said, I don't regret going into this business. Overall, it's given me a great sense of pride. It gives me good material to share here on YouTube, and it also gives me a better understanding of the industry overall. In my day job, I do deal with a lot of different trucking companies, owner operators, and a magnitude of businesses throughout different industries. So being able to relate on this level as a business owner who has payroll and everything else has an added benefit. So with that being said, if you need any additional help with your business, or would like someone to take a look at your business plan or even give you a second set of eyes on how your business is running, reach out to me through email or go to my website. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I wish you the best of luck in your business. And until next time, have a great day.